Do you have a relationship with somebody who's good looking, smart, loving, affectionate, that gives you pretty much everything you want, but you still don't believe that it's genuine? Well, you know, it's quite a common problem, and I'm going to tell you a story about a client of mine who had that problem and how I helped them build more trust and get more out of the relationship that way. So my client had um, a wonderful boyfriend. He was extremely good looking. He was smart. He had a good job. He was popular. He was affectionate. He was thoughtful. He'd make her dinner. He'd bring her breakfast in bed. He'd arrange uh, going out together. And he kept telling her that she was good looking and he enjoyed making love with her. But she just had this doubt all the time that there was something not right. It wasn't true. She would kind of get tense during lovemaking and uh, make it difficult for her to relax and enjoy it. Then he'd be concerned about whether it hurt her or not, whether he was being too rough and so on. So it was very hard for, let's call her Margaret, to uh, let herself go and just be bathed in this wonderful love and care, especially as he was such a good-looking guy and she didn't feel like she was that attractive. She felt like she got the catch, not that she was the catch. So let me tell you a little bit about her history. She came from a, a family where her father left and uh, didn't keep in touch with her very much, didn't own her, didn't care about her feelings. So she grew up feeling unwanted and rejected and not knowing how to make herself lovable to her dad. She tried several times and failed. And her previous relationships with other boyfriends failed miserably because she never really believed that they wanted her. They either just wanted sex or they wanted her to use her for something to get to another girl or to get something else in life, you know, maybe some study credits or whatever. But this guy was different. He stuck with her no matter how much pain she was in, no matter how much she pushed him away, no matter how much she ignored his advances. Something about him was uh, relieving to her that he would stick by her. So one day she came to see me and she told me that she'd been looking on his computer because she was suspicious about who he was talking to. Was he going on Facebook? Was he going on anything else? And she found out that he'd been visiting some sites that were sexual and she got extremely worried, extremely anxious, and very, very upset about this, not knowing what it meant. And we looked at it together and what I helped her understand was, given the fact that when they were making love, it was very hard for her to enjoy it, that he was concerned about any pain he might be giving or any roughness. He didn't want to upset her or make her feel uncomfortable or force her in any way. So he was kind of looking at sites that talked about females and their experience in sex and about males and their approach and so on. He was just educating himself. Well, my client just could not get her head around that. She could not believe it. It had to be a sign of cheating, a sign that he was about to leave her, a sign that he was not really interested in her. And she started to have a panic attack in the room with me at that moment. And what I helped her understand was that there are people in the world like her boyfriend who actually do things out of care and concern and thoughtfulness not to hurt, not to upset, not to cheat, not to sever the ties, but to inform themselves so that they can get more connection with you because they love you. It took her a long time, but very soon we kept looking at the evidence rather than what she imagined regarding her boyfriend's commitment, his loyalty, his fidelity, and his attitude towards being with her. He never let her down. He took her to family events. He shared her with his family. He didn't go out without her. There was no reason for her to think that she was not the one for him. But her past history kept getting in the way and until we kept building up the evidence, the evidence, the evidence that her boyfriend was truly committed to her and that she had no reason to mistrust him, very gradually she began to relax in the relationship and enjoy it. And then she found 
that there was more communication, there was more openness, and it was a wonderfully freeing experience for her. Yes, from time to time, those old fears about should she trust him and the suspicious and the trying to avoid rejection, they came up every now and again. But in our work together, we processed it and we realized where it was coming from. It was coming from the past and not the present. And that saved her relationship. It made it work. And she didn't let the good guy go. She kept on to the, kept hold of the good guy. And they're still together, working on their relationship, making it stronger, taking the next step. And you can do the same by building on your trust issues and seeing where your fears come from and making sure that it's not in the real world, that it's still from the past. And that's a way in which you can help yourself too. You might need some help doing it, but it's a start. So now let me know what you think. If this resonates with you, leave some comments. Maybe you've had an experience like it yourself. Maybe you've been on the other end of it, like the boyfriend, being totally genuine and committed, but feeling upset that your partner just doesn't trust you. Whatever your experience is, please share them with me. Let me know what you think of the video and what you'd like advice on in the future.